now that we know the importance of fairness in AI, let's see the AI F360 toolkit in action to see how it can help us build a systematic approach to fairness in AI. We can understand the AI F360 toolkit by answering the five questions mentioned above. The AI F360 is an open source toolkit developed by researchers at IBM. The purpose of this toolkit is to increase fairness of AI. It can identify bias in data sets. The toolkit can be used in several industries where privileged, underprivileged, protected and unprotected groups get affected due to the outcome of AI algorithms. To identify the existence of bias and to mitigate it, the toolkit can be used before running the ML model, during the running of an ML model or after the run of an ML model. Before entering the case study, let's revisit some important terms about AI ethics. Bias, as we know, is a systematic error in an AI system that has been designed intentionally or not in a way that may generate unfair decisions. In the context of fairness, we are concerned with unwanted bias that places privileged groups at systematic advantage and underprivileged groups at a disadvantage. Fairness metric is a quantification of unwanted bias in training data or models. Favorable label is the value corresponding to an outcome that provides an advantage to the recipient. Group fairness represents the goal of groups defined by protected attributes receiving similar treatments or outcomes, while individual fairness represents the goal of individuals receiving similar treatments or outcomes. Privileged protected attributes indicate groups that have historically been systematic at an advantage. For example, in the Titanic dataset, children and female were the privileged protected attribute as they were given preference during evacuation and their survival rate was high. Now the question remains, why can't we just drop a protected attribute if it's causing problems to the model? The reason is that this feature always has a correlation with the other variables in the data set and hence forms for a good, good predictor. The AIF360 framework consists of over 70 metrics that can be used to assess fairness of AI systems. Let's look at a few here. The statistical parity difference is the difference that the privileged and underprivileged classes get a particular outcome. The statistical parity basically is an equity measure where members of a group have equal chance of having the same outcome. Consider a care management setting as shown in the diagrams above. In yellow, we have those that have received the care management and those not colored in yellow did not receive the care management. In the underprivileged group, six out of 10 received the care management and in the privileged group, seven out of 10 received the care management. The difference here is a negative 10%, which indicates unfairness against the underprivileged group. This is the statistical parity difference. We are not so much concerned about the number of people that received the care management, but the true positive rate at which it is based on some underlying ground truth of who needed the care. The underprivileged group has a five is to seven true positive rate and the privileged group has a six is to seven true positive rate. The difference between the two is a negative 15% and being away from zero indicates that this is an unfair situation. The negative value indicates that it is against the privileged group. This represents equal opportunity difference. In terms of a working model pipeline, fairness can be seen as follows. During the pre-processing phase, the bias mitigation algorithm is applied to the data set before a model is run. This is used to fix the data before modeling and it's the most optimal way of mitigating bias. In the processing phase, the bias mitigation algorithm is applied to the data set during the model's training and evaluation phase and is meant to fix the classifier before predictions are made. The bias mitigation algorithm can be applied to the model after it is run on the data set as well and is meant to be applied to predictions of the model's results. 
post processing techniques are generally used when the system is being the system being worked upon is a black box here are a list of algorithms used to remove bias spanning across all the three phases of pre in and post processing we will briefly define these in the upcoming slides looking at some pre processing algorithms deweighing modifies the weights of the different training samples disparate impact remover edits feature values to improve group fairness optimized pre processing modifies training data features and labels and learning fair representations learns fair representations by obfuscating information about protected attributes some in processing algorithms are adverse adversarial debiasing that uses adversarial techniques to maximize accuracy and reduce evidence of protected attributes in predictions prejudice remover which adds a disc discrimination aware regularization term to the learning objective and the meta fair classifier that takes the fairness metric as part of the input and returns a classifier optimized for the metric lastly looking at a few post processing algorithms reject option classification change, changes predictions from a classifier to make them fairer calibrated equalized odds optimizes over calibrated classifier score outputs that lead to fair output labels and equalized odds modifies the predicted label using an optimization scheme to make predictions fairer this slide gives a basic guideline on how we can approach an ai fairness problem we need to first identify the protected and privileged attributes based on the fairness definitions applicable to our case then we apply the respective algorithm in the ai pipeline where we have access it is always good to use pre processing algorithms if possible finally we can check the bias metrics after applying the mitigation algorithm a general rule of thumb is that the aif360 algorithms should only be applied to well defined data and well defined use cases a little misunderstanding of bias is required for the success of the aif360 algorithms the users need to make sure where they can apply on what protected variables etc for understanding this framework through a case study we will apply the disparate impact remover algorithm to a bank churning model dataset for our example case we work with the churn modeling dataset available from kaggle this dataset has 14 attributes that describe churn behavior the dataset presents a binary classification problem asking whether the customer churn occurs or not that is will the customer close their account first we install the required packages here is a list of libraries that we need to import before moving forward it is always a good idea to spend some time on data exploration checking your understanding of the variables their types and the other number of missing values this slide shows the gist of exploration done on this data additionally we also do some visualizations to understand the data set better correlation matrices can help identify variables in the data that are dependent and independent of the target variable this information can generally be used to reduce under and overfitting of the model dropping variables that are not going to be used for modeling customer id should also not be used for modeling as the values are all unique and customer id should not be predictive as it is used as a unique identifier in the data set here we are encoding male as 1 and female as 0 since machine learning algorithms work best with numerical features this slide explains the partitioning approach for building the model first create an x and y dataset with x containing the independent variables and y containing the dependent variable next partition the dataset into a training and a testing set with 80% of the data going to the training set and 20% going to the testing set 
Now, finally, we compute the bias statistics on the original data set. Here, we compute the disparate impact ratio. Note that the dependent variable, y, indicates whether a customer closed an account or not, one standing for a closed account, while zero stating that the customer did not close their account. As the variable exited represents an unfavorable outcome, the disparate impact ratio is greater than one. A disparate impact ratio of greater than one therefore indicates that more females than males close their accounts. The next step is to create a logistic regression model and to compute the accuracy of this model. We then apply the disparate impact removal algorithm to the data set and recompute the accuracy and the updated disparate impact ratio. Computing the accuracy on the transformed data set after applying disparate impact remover algorithm is shown in this slide. We see that the accuracy now is approximately at 79%, which is similar to what we achieved on the original data set, showing that increasing fairness did not degrade the model's prediction power. Computing the updated disparate impact ratio on this slide, we see that the value has reduced, but it is still higher than the recommended value of 1.25. Finally, we summarize the results here and observe that we reduced disparate impact of the data set by 0.26 points while keeping the accuracy intact. As seen from results above, we have observed that though the disparate impact values have improved, the accuracy remained the same. This will not be the case every time and often we need to make a call for accuracy as it may reduce after applying the bias algorithms. Also, the biggest trade-off is that the data set should be well-defined, clean, and the business case also should be well-defined to identify protected or privileged attributes of the IF360 algorithm to work. It's the user's responsibility and the business's judgment call whether they use these algorithms during the pre-processing, in-processing, or post-processing stage of the algorithm. It's always suggested to use it during the pre-process phase. There is some future work on AI fairness that can be implemented to this and to every other use case. The pre-processing, in-processing, and post-processing techniques should all be applied to see which one works best for the given data set. Since based on the input data, the algorithm that we build and the algorithm that works best will always change. Here are some resources that will help in the understanding and the use of fairness for AI resources. And with this, we conclude the presentation today.